regular domestic sewing machine and we're using a Singer Heavy Duty, your fabric, a sweatband, and these sweatbands are available at capsupplyco.com, a closure for the back, and bias tape or a bias tape kit. Either one will work. And that's your pattern, and this pattern is available at properfitclothing.com. So go ahead and cut your pattern out on the outside of the black lines. Next, you're going to lay your pattern on your fabric, trace it, and cut it out. The pattern indicates the sides you sewed together, so go ahead and mark those so you don't mix them up. And don't forget to mark the hemlines for the pencil holder. You're going to end up with two front, two side, two back, and one pencil holder. You're going to want to start by taking your front two panels, place right sides together, and sew the front edge. And again, this pattern calls for a quarter inch seam allowance. And then go ahead and trim that remaining fabric. Next, take your back two panels, place right sides together, and sew that back edge. Next, you want to take your front two panels and take your side panels and find a side panel that you can sew onto the front. So you're going to make sure it's the right side that you can sew onto the front panel and then sew that side panel onto the front panel. Now take the other side panel and sew onto the opposite side of the back panels. And a good way to make sure it's on the right side, you just put it all together and if it makes a full cap, then you're good to go. And now we're going to be showing you how to set up your twin needle. And this is super simple. Just install like a normal needle, set your machine to zigzag with zero width, and thread two spools of thread the same exact way. So we're going to show you two different options for adding on your bias tape and these are just two different bias tape folders. The one on the right is just one you can get at any hobby store and the one on the left is available at capsupplyco.com. We are going to be using the one on the left just because it's a little bit easier for us to use and we've been using it for a while. But honestly they both do the same thing so use whatever you're comfortable with. everyone you're using line it up with your presser foot and then just tape it right on your machine you definitely are going to want to make sure this is secure so that way nothing's moving around when you're sewing on that bias tape 
Now all you have to do is cut your bias tape to the measurement of the folder and you're ready to start sewing. Now take your front panels and you're going to add bias tape to those front two seams. And then go ahead and do the same thing for your back panels. Then go ahead and take your front half and your back half, line up the centers and sew all the way around that arc. Now you're going to add bias tape all the way across that top seam. So next we're going to be adding bias tape to the back of that opening. And for this video we are going to use the pre-made bias tape and there is a link for this in the description. And you can get this in a bunch of different colors but if you want it to match a hat I recommend using this bias tape making kit. And you can check this out in our other videos we show how to use this. It's super simple and it comes with a bunch of different sizes and it's very easy to use. We definitely use this kit more often because that way we can match the fabric with our hat. But for the video we're just going to show you that there are other options out there. And we're going to be using the double fold pre-made bias tape and go ahead and add it to that whole back edge. And this is definitely a lot easier to use an attachment for your machine, but we're just going to put it on by hand. And lastly for the crown we're going to be adding on a side strip and these are available at cabsupplyco.com and all you have to do is sew onto the inside bottom edge all the way around. Next step is making the brim. Go ahead and grab your brim whatever brim you're using trace around the outside and down just a little bit past. Then from there, grab your sewing machine and do a straight stitch all the way around that arch. Now go ahead and trim about a quarter inch from that seam. Flip the right sides out and then start maneuvering your brim into position.
And if you are satisfied with the look and the tightness, you can skip this next step, but we are gonna be adding some stitches to the top of the brim. And we are using a guide that will be available on capsupplyco.com. It just helps with getting nice, neat stitches around. As you can see, we're doing one line at a time, adjusting it, and then doing the next, and then making sure they're nice and even. Honestly, you can use any guide for this step, something that just keeps that brim from sliding all around. Now that your brim is nice and tight into position, I recommend using a zipper foot for this and then go around and make a seam along that back edge of the brim. Pull towards the back of the brim to make that fabric nice and tight as you sew. Now go ahead and trim about a half an inch from the inside of that brim. Now you're gonna mark the center front of your crown in the center of your brim. Place the right sides together and I recommend using a zipper foot for this part as well and start from the center and sew towards the outside. And once you have one side done, do the same for the other side. And now we're going to be making that pencil holder and start with the edges, roll them over and just do a nice top stitch. And again, the pattern indicates where to make those hems. And then roll over the other side. And these are the shorter sides of that square. Then lastly, you're going to want to roll over that top edge and do a top stitch. And then adding the T-holder is super easy. All you have to do is take a little piece of elastic, fold it over, and then sew it onto that top portion. And you can just sew it right on the same seam as you sewed and made that hem. Now that the brim is on, we're going to go ahead and add on our pencil holder. Place it on the side that best suits you, whether you're right or left-handed. And you're going to want to make sure it rolls over. So just kind of adjust it and then throw a pencil in there to see how tight it will be. And then go from there. You're going to want to mark this after you find the right position. And then go ahead and do a straight stitch all the way across that top. And make sure you do a nice tack stitch on the front and the back. Now we're going to be attaching the sweatband. This step we made our own attachment and we made this out of heavier stock paper. All you have to do is make a little sleeve that your sweatband fits in there nice and snug and then go ahead and tape that onto your sewing machine. It serves as a guide so that way the sweatband doesn't slide all around while you're sewing it onto the crown. Once you have your sweatband guide into position, go ahead and roll over the edge and then just start sewing straight all the way around. And it is really that simple. You get a nice top stitch on the outside and the sweatband will be nice and attached on the inside. 
and we are using professional sweatbands from capsupplyco.com. These are millinery grade and very awesome for making caps. And now we're going to be adding on a plastic snap to the back for a closure. You can literally add whatever you want onto the back. Cap Supply Co. has a huge variety of different components you can add for closures. So go ahead and roll that sweatband over towards the inside and sandwich that plastic component in between and just sew that right on. And it is really just that simple and go ahead and do this for the other side. I do recommend using a heavier weight needle for this process because you are sewing through a decent amount of material. Now we're going to be installing the cover button and these again are available at capsupplygo.com. All the links are in the description below. Cut out a small circle of fabric, place it over the top cover and then insert your middle piece locking everything into position. Now there's a third prong piece that we already have in the press and if you don't have a press you can just push that prong piece through the center with your fingers. Take the top cover and line it up where you see the prongs that are coming through the fabric and slightly hit it with the hammer. This will allow those prongs to go into the middle piece and then lock it all into position holding that cover button in place. And if it looks a little confusing, go ahead and check our other videos out that are totally dedicated to this process alone. And now we're going to be adding air vents to the cap and we're just using eyelets. You pretty much just want them to be evenly spaced and centered in each panel. Once you have your marks, go ahead and cut holes, put your eyelets in and press them into place. And if you don't have a press, pliers work just as good for eyelets. But if you're looking for any tools that we're using specifically, we post all the links in the description below so go ahead and check that out. And the final step is steaming and this helps make all those seams look nice and that sweatband makes it nice and flush on the inside. I highly recommend doing this part either with a steamer or an iron. It just takes the quality of the cap to that next level. And that is how you make your golf pencil cap. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, let us know what you think and we're going to keep the videos coming at you so stay tuned.